the screaming and hollering the blues. Jackson, all I am on, not to just be low. Jackson, all I am on, not to just be low. I ever get back on my, won't be back no more. Well, when I think about the blues, I have to ask myself, you know, what is present pretty much in every type. And when you really get down to it, to me it seems like it's a response to unfairness. That a person born in America, a black person born in America, obviously is born into an unfair situation. There's a school of thought that basically says you can't have the blues unless you were born black in, you know, early 20th century America where people, they had no rights even though it was post-slavery and it was, it was pretty much a, a, a dangerous, constantly, uh, constantly difficult life. You know, just there was nothing, there was nothing, there was nothing um, much pleasant, I think, about it beyond uh, removal from society and sticking with, with, and that's the best I can tell from my limited viewpoint. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I mean, that's, I think, a pretty hardcore stance to take on the matter. I, I certainly don't, I don't think that that's necessarily all that makes up the blues. To me, I don't uh, qualify people's artistic expressions. So people are going to be playing this music um, not only on, in their homes, on their, on their uh, stereo systems, which I think is perfectly valid, but they're also going to keep playing it live. And as such, I think they're really just maintaining the live tradition. And so blues artists are going to keep performing that music, even if it's the oldest, rootsiest blues music. Someone who's performing country blues songs written in the 1920s or 1930s. It's a very, very valid art form. And I've learned a lot of these old songs in, in the hopes, in the strict hopes of bringing back a form of music that I really genuinely believe most people will not listen to nowadays because it's hard to get the records and the records sound what most people consider bad because this, the scratching is not. I don't mean the collectors and I don't mean the freaks like me. I mean the masses. They don't find it to be appealing enough. They'll turn it down so you can't even hear what the people are doing. It's not the same experience as if you heard a person playing an acoustic guitar in a room. So I try to play songs as accurate as possible to try to give something to society that they haven't seen or maybe will never see again. You're not going to hear Charlie Patton records on the radio. You're not going to hear Blind Blake songs on the radio. Almost nobody plays that stuff anywhere. And so for anyone who will go out and do that stuff live and expose audiences to that, is doing a very, very admirable job. There's a few solo uh, acoustic blues players around. Mark being, you know, an excellent player. Uh, he came out on open mic night, and uh, he still comes and plays open mic night when he can. And, uh, but you know, the first time I saw him, I was just like, all right, I mean, this is awesome. Because he plays the authentic country blues, and I, I, I really like that stuff. I've never dedicated myself to trying to learn that finger-picking styles and, and stuff so because you know, I do play blues myself, but uh, you know, his dedication to the art form is uh, you know, highly commendable. Mark is carrying on an old-style tradition. It's, it's pretty technical and uh, he's very adamant about keeping it true to, to the way that it was, to the styles that, that, that it was. That's the reason you hear me cry, Lord, please have mercy on me. Cause I don't want my woman freedom, no bad seed. So that's the reason I keep on telling her.